We'll begin this segment of our Chapter 18 presentation by introducing you to the magical world of acetylides, which are really just al terminal alkynes that have been deprotonated, as shown here. What is the mechanism of this? Well, we treat an alkyne with NaNH2, which is often known as sodamid. NaNH2 you can think of as just being a minus charge on the nitrogen. The electrons come in, grab the terminal hydrogen, and thrust these electrons onto that carbon, giving my, me my negatively charged terminal alkyne. These types of compounds, acetylides, can react with aldehydes and ketones, as shown here. Minus charge on the carbon comes into the carbonyl carbon, thrusts these electrons up onto the oxygen, and gives me this intermediate. When we protonate that oxygen with an acid source, we then get this kind of alcohol, which is really cool. It's a secondary alcohol that has an alkyne adjacent to it. I should tell you that the proton source that I stole from your book here is actually pyridinium, but you can use other acids as well. We'll now address the addition of hydride to aldehydes and ketones. Before beginning, I want to remind you of something I mentioned back in chapter 16. One way to quickly spot a reduction reaction in organic chemistry is to see if a molecule has gained bonds to hydrogen. If it has, then we can usually say that the molecule has been reduced. The hydride reactions that I'm going to show you on this slide involve using sodium borohydride, NaBH4, and reacting it with an aldehyde or a ketone. If you treat an aldehyde with sodium borohydride and then follow it with an ethanol or acid quench, it will convert an aldehyde into a primary alcohol. By comparison, if you take a ketone and treat it with sodium borohydride followed by ethanol or acid quench, it will make a secondary alcohol. What is the mechanism of this reaction? Well, you have to remember that sodium borohydride really is a source of hydride, H minus. So when we take our aldehyde or ketone starting materials, we can imagine treating them with sodium borohydride as being like treating them with H minus. This H minus comes in to the carbonyl carbon, thrusts the electrons up onto this oxygen, and gives us this tetrahedral intermediate. Now because these groups, which would be hydrogen if I started with an aldehyde, or an alkyl chain if I started with a ketone. Neither of these groups are good leaving groups, so the minus charge in the oxygen cannot come down and kick them off. Instead, it lingers until I protonate it. And once I do that during my acid quench, it gives me this. If I had started with an aldehyde starting material, then I would have an H here, and this product would be, would be a primary alcohol. If I had started with a ketone, where both of these are carbon chains, then the final product would be a secondary alcohol. Let's now do some problems. I want you to show me how to prepare the following products by reacting an aldehyde or ketone with sodium borohydride. I should advise you that this may be a good place for you to pause the video and attempt these problems on your own first, since I will be momentarily giving you all of the cancers. Ah, uh, I mean answers. So here is the answer to our first question. I want to know how to make this product beginning from an aldehyde or ketone and treating it with sodium borohydride. The way we do this is easy. All we do is convert the oxygen carbon bond here into a double bond. That takes me backwards to this starting material, which is a ketone. Thus, if I took this ketone and treat it with sodium borohydride and an acid quench, I guarantee that it would make this alcohol product. What is the mechanism? Well, remember, sodium borohydride is really just a source of H minus. So when I take this ketone and treat it with sodium borohydride, I'm really reacting it with H minus that goes into this carbonyl carbon and thrust the electrons up onto this oxygen. That gives me this intermediate. When this intermediate is protonated, it then gives me the final product. Here's the answer to our second problem. I want to know how to make this alcohol from an aldehyde or a ketone using sodium borohydride. Once again, all I do to work backwards to my starting material 
is convert this bond here between the oxygen and carbon into a double bond. If I do that, I start with this aldehyde, which I guarantee upon being treated with sodium borohydride will be converted into this product. What is the mechanism? Once again, we have to remember that sodium borohydride is really a source of H minus. Thus, when I react this aldehyde with sodium borohydride, the H minus hydride comes into this carbonyl carbon, thrusts the electrons up onto that oxygen, and gives me this intermediate. When this intermediate is quenched with acid, it then yields this product. Let's look at our third question. How can I prepare this tertiary alcohol beginning from an aldehyde or a ketone starting material and treating it with sodium borohydride? Well, as it turns out, I can't. This was actually a trick question. Ha ha. <laughs> OK. But the reason I asked you this question is because I wanted you to remember the reactions that we learned in our previous video from this chapter. If I have a tertiary alcohol and I want to make that from an aldehyde or a ketone, what I actually have to do is take a ketone and treat it with a Grignard reagent. So I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to convert this bond into a double bond in my starting material and get rid of this cyclohexyl group. That gives me this starting material, which is very boring. What is the difference between this starting material and this product? Well, the product has this cyclohexyl group. So what Grignard reagent would I have to introduce? I'd have to introduce cyclohexyl magnesium bromide, shown here. Now remember, cyclohexyl magnesium bromide, as well as all Grignard reagents, really just behave as if there were a minus charge on this carbon bound to the magnesium. That minus charge, when reacted here with this ketone, comes into this carbonyl carbon, thrusting these electrons onto the oxygen and give me this intermediate here. When this intermediate is quenched with acid, it then yields the indicated product. So I want to ask you, what occurs when we add hydride to an acyl chloride? Well, here we have an acyl chloride that I'm reacting with sodium borohydride. The H minus in sodium borohydride comes into the carbonyl carbon and thrusts these electrons up onto the oxygen, giving me this tetrahedral intermediate. Now this is a little different from the tetrahedral intermediate that I would form if I had started with a ketone or an aldehyde here. The reason is because a Cl is a very good leaving group. So what occurs? Well, these uh, electrons up here on this negatively charged oxygen come down here close to form a double bond and kick off the chloride as a leaving group, giving me this aldehyde intermediate. Unfortunately, I can't stop there. What ends up occurring is another molecule of sodium borohydride thrusts another hydride atom into this carbonyl and pumps the electrons up onto this oxygen. That O minus, shown right here, then gets quenched during my uh, acid workup and gives me a final primary alcohol. What's the bottom line for this reaction? Well, I want you to remember that if I take sodium borohydride and react it with an acyl chloride, what ends up happening is two hydride uh, two hydrides come in subsequently and take this acyl chloride all the way down to a primary alcohol. I can't stop at the aldehyde. The aldehyde gets attacked again by hydride and goes all the way to a primary alcohol. 